Donna Laprinzi is a second generation luthier who trained under her father, Agostino Laprinzi, a master guitar craftsman. As she honed her craft, she implemented everyday designs and visuals into her style. The father-daughter team continued to craft high quality instruments in their Clearwater shop. As far as constructing any instruments, I was the first. It started with me. I had, had three children. When I had to punish them for something they did wrong, they had to come to the workshop. And uh, I knew when Donna, when it was her turn to come to the shop because she, did, she loved it. I knew I wanted to become a luthier and follow my father's footsteps when I was young and we would get in trouble in our punishments. We had to go to the shop um, and work in the shop and I enjoyed it and I, so I knew I liked woodworking and that type of work. It wasn't difficult at all to learn under my father. He was a very good teacher, very patient, never yelled at me, never, he always took his time and um, he made sure I, I learned. So. The most important lesson my father taught me was always to do my best work. Um, and as long as I was doing good work, that everything else would basically fall in place. I think the biggest highlight of my crafting is when I have a finished product and I'm able to turn it over to a customer and to see their expression. Um, and I could tell that they were really enjoying you know, their instrument. Um, that I think is the biggest highlight. This guitar. I mean, it just feels, it just feels excellent. Like, the way that it plays, it's, it couldn't be any more perfect, really, as far as an acoustic goes. Um, the action is, I mean, that means basically the distance between the strings and the fretboard is, is perfect. Like, the tone of it, it doesn't affect the tone, but it still feels very comfortable to play. Um, the intonation, which is basically saying that the open string is the same as you come up here. It, it's perfect, like, you know, it's still, it's, you're still getting an A right there, and right there, and right there, and it just couldn't be, I mean, it couldn't be any better, really. <laughs> um, I mean, the tone of it, I mean, it just sounds beautiful, like, like, I haven't heard a guitar that sounds this crisp in a long time. Like, I don't even think I've ever played one like this. Uh, my creative process, I get creative ideas from everything and anything. I can look at a piece of furniture and say, think about, oh, but that design is nice. How can I implement it? Or even, um, you know, any architectural design, I can look at something and say, how can I implement that into it? Because that's a nice feature. Maybe I can somehow get it into my instruments. In the end, when you see a customer appreciates all that hard work, it, it makes everything worthwhile. The guitar that stands out the most to me that I built was the very first guitar I built completely on my own. Um, that instrument I built for my husband, so that one probably stands out the most for me. Uh, yes, it starts, my creative process starts with the piece of wood. When we find a piece of wood or a customer picks out a, a set that they want to use for their instrument, that's when the process would start and that's when the design aspect comes in. We're going to bend the bend the sides to whatever shape body we're going to be using. Um, and then the, we design the rosette. A lot of times customers have input on what they would like, so you know I'll design something that they're um, interested in. And then it's the process of making all the parts for the instrument, then we go to assembling the instrument, and then there's sanding after everything you do. It seems like no matter what process you're in, uh, you know, you cut the wood, you got to sand the wood. You got to cut, you know, sand the wood before you cut the wood. It's always, uh, you know, something. Then once the instrument is assembled, then we have to go into the finishing stage um, where we're applying the finish and based on what the customer wants will be the type of finish we use, whether it's a satin finish or a high gloss finish. Beautiful, man. Uh, my first time playing one of these and I got to tell you, it plays great. <clears throat> It looks like it's put together beautifully, and it's so cool to be here in the actual place they make them, you know? So cool to meet Donna, and uh, man, I'm gonna have to check these out more. <laughs> I didn't tune it at all, yeah. 
it was perfectly in tune. It's a really nice thing, you know, you show up to play guitar and, uh, you know, you never played it before and it plays great. I mean, that's one thing that, you know, I'll pick up some acoustic guitars sometimes and they're, and they're difficult to play or, you know, they're set up so high, the action's so high and stuff like that, but it's so nice to just pick it up and there you go. The biggest challenge I probably faced was early on um, because being a woman, it was this is a male dominated field. Um, and we did a lot of building for overseas. Um, even though the United States was a little better and more accepting of a woman in this field, overseas was a little bit, they lagged behind us a little bit. So that was probably the biggest challenge to be accepted um, over there. I'm always willing to train female, male, anybody that needs it. Uh, how we can differ from the big main man manufacturers is we can't really compete with them, of course, uh, volume-wise. Um, but the difference is that we have the ability, because we're a small shop, we can tap tone every instrument we make. Unlike a major manufacturer, they have to kind of find a happy medium. Um, it, they, you know, all their tops have to be a certain thickness because they don't have the time uh, to tap toe in every single instrument like I'm able to do here uh, because we're building one instrument and from start to finish the same person is building that instrument, not like going down an assembly line. For more information, visit AugustinoLaprinzi.com.